Hello everyone, it's me, Anthony Couch, a guitarist on YouTube, yet again talking about the master of guitar himself, Joe Satriani. Now, Joe Satriani needs no introduction at all. I'm talking about Joe Satriani today. You know who he is. To be more specific, I'm talking about <laughs> needlessly and meticulously analysing an, an, an answer that he gave to an interview years and years and years ago, a video that I saw way back then that just made everything click for me. And if you stick around to the end of this video, you'll see I'm going to put my understanding of where he's coming from with this response to this question, I'm going to put it all in a big guitar improvisation to, to just show you how I understand it and to illustrate what he might be talking about. But before we get going, I want to know down in those comments, down there, not up there, stop scrolling up because they're down there, scroll down, I want to know down there in them comments, how would you rate your knowledge of modes? Do you understand them completely? Is it still a bit of a grey area for you? Are you working on it? Let me know down there, modes, tough stuff. Now of course, I'm going to leave a link to the actual video down in the description, so make sure you go and have a look at that and watch this video, it's a bit 10 minutes. I'm not gonna show you the old 10 minute long and analyze sentence for sentence on this video. I'm just gonna give you the essence of his answer and, and my thoughts on it. Because we're talking today about something relating to a big Joe Satriani concept, which is the pitch axis theory. In this interview, he does talk about the pitch axis theory, where you would play one note and get to grips with the sound of the modes over just that one note, changing the key, changing the mode, I should say, over just one note. I'm not really talking about that today. I'm talking about his, his response to this question. Now, we don't actually hear the interviewer's question in this interview. What we do hear, though, later in the interview, is that Joe says this. And so it, it's less accepting of uh, you opening those little doors that you talked about and, and right. adding uh, the extra notes, the blue notes the scary notes. <laughs> and what I take from that is that the interviewer probably asked something along the lines of, you know, in a conventional rock song that is in a key, uh, how do you account for those crazy, weird, outside notes uh, that you play? Those, those ones that, sound, that make a listener go, oh, that's a bit interesting. And I think that's what they asked. And this is Joe's response. Pentatonic blues rock that you can almost play anything. And even if the progression is you could start with a you know what I mean? And it would still go with a in other words, the scale doesn't necessarily have to match up with the chord progression. This blew my mind. I mean, this is just a short snippet of the entire answer. But what he's getting at there, I mean, he's in B minor, uh, so I'm going to be in B minor today. If you've got this riff, and, and he's just talking about the, the simplicity of, of the choice that you get when it comes to choosing a scale to play over your riff or chord. Because, I mean, let's, let's just get that other little sound bite that he says. Scale doesn't necessarily have to match up with the chord progression. I remember watching this video years ago and, and, and it just dawned on me that, that if you've got a riff, that little one that I did at the onset of the video, what am I playing now? Uh, Joe's in the key of B, so I'm in the key of B, minor. I'm just playing the notes B and A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. So then, what that must mean is that any scale that has got the notes B and A within them is going to work over the top of that. That's that's the simple, like just this simplicity, the simple, simple, simple answer. I don't know where I'm going with that sentence, but I was going somewhere. The fact that even just by thinking the root note being B of your scale. That, that you can come up, now I'm not going to pretend that I've got these all off the top of my head because I had to write these down for the big improv at the end. B minor pentatonic has got a B and an A in there. Major pentatonic, the blues scale, Aeolian, Mixolydian, Phrygian dominant, the Phrygian scale, 
Dorian scale, Lydian dominant, the Locrian scale, the whole tone scale. They were just off the top of my head. Right, I, I sat down and I thought, right, if I just add the notes B and A, then that means that all these other scales, all these, this big list of scales, have got a B and an, well, some of them don't even add it. Oh, well, that's an interesting thing. Some of them, the major pentatonic, doesn't even have an A, but it's got the B. You've got to be careful because the scale can't have an A sharp in there, but it doesn't mean that it has to have an A because I'm playing an A, if that makes sense. You know, if I've got this riff, I can play a B major pentatonic. The riff is going to have the minor seventh, the flattened seventh. The scale doesn't necessarily need to have it. What I take from this is a really interesting idea that that you, that you break the chains of the scale that you think you're in, or the key that you think you're in. Especially if it's riff based, and especially if the chords... You know, if that is, is just very much static, isn't it? So, so it's not changing chords, where I would have to think of other modes that correspond with the key as a whole. It's just a static... B, mm, it's not B necessarily B minor because mixolydian fits over those. So I can't even say it's B minor. It's just it's just B with an A. It's just two notes. But don't be you you, you don't have to be strict. You don't have to think right. This is B minor pentatonic and do the unless you want to because that sounds brilliant. But within that scale, or within over the solo. You can switch to a more major sound because the third isn't implied by incredible. And during the course of the interview, as it goes on, he actually comes out with two of these quotes, which are my favourite Joe Satriani quotes when it comes to this theory stuff. It liberates the listener's experience. It liberates the listener's experience. If I'm, you know, if I've got a, a this riff. <laughs> and I do B minor pentatonic all the way through for a three minute long solo, that's going to be really, really good. It's going to be, let's, let's all be honest, it sounds cool, we all enjoy doing that, we like listening to it. But then if I stick in some notes, it, 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 the audience just goes, oh, something, it's just changed direction. As long as the scale that I change to either has a B and an A, or doesn't imply that seventh, that A. A sharp thing, if you get what I mean. I can push it as far as I want to. If the, if what else? What was that other thing you said? The fewer the notes in the chords, the more freedom you have melodically when it comes to melody and, and improvisation. The fewer the notes in the chord, the more freedom you have melodically. That's that's it. Isn't it? If you've just got root and flat and seventh. It opens the door to loads of different scales. Even if the rest of the song is B minor pentatonic, if your vocalist is singing all this stuff, you know, and you come in with the solo, you don't have to do B minor pentatonic because your singer's singing it. You can come in with. Imagine that in a song, that just, your audience definitely won't be expecting it and they will be liberated for it, says Joe. Anyway, anyway, it's a tough one to talk about this because, you know, the video exists and I'm, I don't want to treat people like you, you don't understand it when he says it and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, spoon feeding you. This is just me because I'm passionate about how this made it click for me. I hope it makes it click for you. And, and watch the video, watch Joe himself. You know, it's all getting mashed up in my head and spewing out in a less understandable way. But the way that I understand it is that the fewer the notes, the more options you've got. I actually put this improvisation together that you're about to see in a second, where I, I think it's 10 or 11 uh, different scales over just. <laughs> See what you think about it. See what your favourite sound is. Do you even like the fact that it shifts and changes or do you like a more rigid approach?
Well, there you go. Yeah, I wouldn't take a little bit with the whole tone scale just on one string. I got a bit lost towards the end. I wasn't going to do another take. I couldn't be bothered. Uh, anyway, I've been Anthony Cage. Thank you very much for watching. Keep your notes few and far between. Open the Pandora's box of crazy scales. As I say, I just scratched the surface. They were just off the top of my head. I bet there's loads of other crazy exotic scales that I could have chosen. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.